welcome back to Letter with ABC, a series on hand lettering. Today's episode will focus on the materials you'll need to get started with your hand lettering journey. So when I started lettering around five years ago, there weren't a lot of materials yet, but we were able to, I was able to make do with a pencil, some fineliner pens, markers, and that was basically it. But these days, the market has really opened up to a lot of different materials that you can access in your art stores, bookstores, stationery stores, and everywhere that you can find art supplies. And with that, it's going to be overwhelming, especially if you're starting hand lettering for the first time. Which one should you get? What type of paper should you get? What type of paint should you try? Which color should you buy? And which types of materials work best for the type of style that you want to achieve? So this video is going to give you a rundown on some of the basic materials I highly recommend and keep watching to know more about each and every aspect of the tools that you will need for your hand lettering journey. To start, you will need a pencil. I usually just use a wooden pencil, but mechanical pencil is also a good alternative. I recommend getting 2H or 5H. The one I'm doing here is just a regular pencil. You will see that the difference lies with how dark the pencil is in terms of its payoff on paper. And when you're doing lettering, you really want to make sure that you will be able to erase it easier or actually not erase it for the long run because especially if you're doing something like watercolor it's going to be hard to specifically catch all the edges and if you want to paint in lighter colors it's also more beneficial for you if you just use a lighter pencil so these come in a lot of different brands i'm currently using faber castell but yeah just to give an idea this is the diagram of sorts between like the regular one the 2h and the 5h but personally i always use either 2h 3h or 4h and you also need an eraser because as usual you need to erase some mistakes ever since i started lettering i only swear by fine liner pens these round tip drawing pens come in many brands and thicknesses but generally i like using uni or faber castell in 0 0.2 0 0.5 and 0.8 for lettering but here i'm going to share with you some of the swatches first up is this copic chow dual point marker this actually more for inking and then you have the tombow fudubiori pen this is a hard tip brush pen Mine is actually running out of ink now, as you can see, but it's really handy and I use it a lot for brush lettering. And then you have these Faber-Castell Echo Pigment Liners. I'm swatching three different types that I have here, but generally I like using 0.2 and 0.5 a lot. These are great for practicing, especially for the worksheets that we will be using. Lastly, I also recommend getting a Sharpie. It's really great for doodles. This one has a thin point, so it's great for lettering. You also have brush pens, which are pens in brush form. These are some of my favorites, and these come in a lot of colors and a lot of variants, actually. But here are some of my favorites. The first is a Tombow Dual Brush Pen. This is the holy grail of brush pens. I recently discovered this, and it's really great for brush lettering in general. Next, you also have the Mild Liner Brush Pen. This is also a new addition to the Mild Liner because it's usually for highlighters and for bullet journaling, but the brush form is really versatile and easy to use. It also has a round tip, so it's also dual. And lastly, the Koi Coloring Brush Pen. So this is also a really handy one, and I think this is the cheapest among all three. So these come in a lot of colors and a lot of varieties, so make sure to check it out. Moving on, sometimes I still use also colored pencils so i'm sharing with you two brands here the first one is prisma color premiere these are entry level colored pencils but the pigment is really great and then i also have the Carandash pablo which i will show you later on as i do some demos so the prisma color is um has been here for quite a while it's a very popular color pencil brand i remember when i started drawing a lot of people have recommended this this is classic color pencil by the way it's not water soluble so you will see that the pigmentation is really great so if you don't want to use a brush pen or a fine letter pen and you want to practice actually using a color pencil is also a great idea because the texture is similar to a pencil that way it won't be hard for you to sort of transition into inking
I use both watercolor and gouache for hand lettering, but for watercolor, Prang is my holy grail. It's the brand that I first started with. This creates a more transparent wash, and I always recommend this brand for beginners because the price point is around like five to six dollars, which is really good. The palette on the left, I think that's just like four dollars, but this 16 color palette includes the one on the right, so I'm swatching these ones for you. Next, I am using also the Schmincke Aquarelle. I got this when I was in Paris a couple of years ago. It's been so long. And this one, I am swatching the right side, which is the original set of 12 that I got. The left side, I had to buy different half pans and sort of, you know, customize my own palette. This is a high-grade pan, so I think this cost me more than $50, but... The quality is really superb. All of the artworks that I use for my books, I use this particular watercolor pan because the color is really vibrant if you compare it to the Prang. If you want to move forward in terms of being, you know, expanding your collection, I suggest getting a Schmincke pan eventually. Next, if you want to venture into gouache, I highly recommend the Karandash Gouache Studio. This set has been an ultimate favorite for me not just for lettering but i also started painting with landscapes with this and yeah you will see my palette is very overused the colors come out really vibrant and the big difference between the gouache paint and the watercolor paint is actually the opacity so what's great about gouache is it's highly soluble with water but it doesn't dry as fast as acrylic so you will see here that i could put as much pigment as i want and it will become really opaque compared to watercolor so this is the ideal palette if you want to do a lot of bright colors and more opaque pieces now let's move on to paper one of the most important aspects of lettering i just use office paper for practice but for watercolor i am using the lettering progress keeper which is canson 200 gsm it's great for practice and drafts and also for basic watercolor painting Next is the Canson Moval Aquarelle. I love this. This is like a higher end version of the 200 GSM. You will see it's a bit textured. It's made with cellulose, so it's really great for archival work as well. I use this a lot because it's also not very expensive compared to other brands. I also use this St. Cuthbert's Mill if I want to do more advanced pieces. And of course, the Arche. Arch is the most expensive, it's like the Louis Vuitton of watercolor paper. I'm using a hot pressed one. This is really great for archival work as well. Lastly, we're moving to the resources. Of course, I want to show you guys that I have a book on lettering, which is more than five years old now. And the digital copy is available at my web shop. I will link it down below as well. Apart from that, last year I created the lettering workbook. So this is an essential guide to hand lettering in general. And if you want to improve on your layouts, brush lettering, and bounce lettering, they're all here. So I also include some tips and ideas as well. Next, I have this book called Hand Lettering A to Z where I share different fonts and I collaborate with different artists and you can make your own fonts using the given font styles available. Lastly, I also have this book called Hand Style Lettering, which I am also part of. It's a directory of a lot of type artists and different styles you can explore. I will link more resources down below. Actually, some of them are in the studio right now. That's why I wasn't able to film them. So, apologies. Watching this video and make sure to download the Letter with ABC workbook to guide you on your hand lettering journey throughout the episodes. If you want to learn more about lettering, I actually wrote and illustrate a lot of books about it, so I will share it here. So, first off, you have the ABCs of hand lettering. This is the basic guide you need to get started into hand lettering. You also have the lettering workbook, which is available in the Philippines, and I also have some available in the US. I will link it down below also for your reference. This is a self-published workbook. Apart from this, I also have this book called Hand Lettering A to Z, which is how you can create different font styles and different techniques with your hand lettering. This has been translated into nine languages and is available worldwide, as well as the Hand Lettering A to Z workbook, which is an accompaniment to this book, and it's great to work with together. Lastly, if you'd like to get into more of hand lettering and calligraphy, I suggest picking up a copy of the complete photo guide to hand lettering calligraphy, also available worldwide, mostly in Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Book depository and all the respective links i will make sure to put them down below for your reference see you guys on the next video bye